Hello, I'm Wendy. Today we're going to start to paint buildings, a simple cottage row in watercolour. What you're looking at now is a simplified drawing of a little cottage row, three or four buildings that are joined together and are seen quite frequently here in South West Wales. It is, as I've said, a very simplified drawing and that's where we're going to start off. And in a couple of videos to come, then I'm going to um, put more detail onto this picture and show you some quite interesting techniques for painting buildings, I hope. I did this little drawing in ink so that I could trace it onto watercolour paper. Presently it's on cartridge. I quite like to do that. If you'd like a template of this drawing, then there is a link in the description box below the video. Here is my drawing on watercolour paper. The picture itself is going to be approximately six inches by six inches. And here I'm just showing you um, a picture that I did earlier and we're hoping that the, um, the painting I'm going to do today is going to look something along these lines. You're never going to get two pictures exactly the same and you wouldn't want to. But we're going to mask out the cottages. We're going to put in a nice dark sky and then we're going to do a very, very simple foreground. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out by talking about how to put on the masking fluid briefly and then talking about some colour mixing before getting on to putting on the watercolour washers. I'm using this PBO, I think that's how you pronounce it, masking fluid, which um, is really good, I really like it. And I'm using some very small masking fluid brushes. You do have to be very, very careful applying the masking fluid. It can be done quite quickly, but um, you need to get some nice sharp edges on these buildings. I have made a video on how to apply masking fluid, and so I will put a link to that in the description box below. I like to use um, masking fluid brushes and I like to rinse my brushes in very dilute washing up liquid um, every so often just to protect them. I have applied some masking fluid to the ground just below the cottages. Um, you'll see why I've done that when I start applying the washers it will just leave you a nice straight edge there. And also I'm using a very small brush here to suggest some little fence posts either side of the cottage, just to add a small amount of detail. We're up to the colours now and just a little bit about the colour mixing. I wanted to get a nice dark sky so we had um, some contrast between the, the sky and the lighter cottages. In this case I'm using indigo and I'm using the Cotman indigo and I'm doing some, just some colour swatches here for you to see how dark you can get the colour and then by adding small amounts of water you can lighten it as you can see I've done here. It's a good idea to always do this um, even if you're familiar with the colour. It will remind you on the darkness and the lightness you can get and also in part of the washers I'm adding some ultramarine to the indigo so again I'm just doing some colour swatches to see what the colour is going to look like, how dark I can get it, and then again how light I can get it as well. If you don't currently have indigo, then you can use burnt umber and ultramarine, or even burnt sienna and ultramarine for your darks. So with all the colours mixed up now, what I'm going to do is paint a really nice dark sky over the cottages. And because they've been masked out, you can be really free with putting these washers on. You'll notice also that I put some masking tape around the picture. I don't always do this. It's not sticking it down to the base or anything. It's just put on so that when you carefully pull it off at the end of the picture, it gives you a nice white edge, a little bit like mounting a picture. As I say, I don't do it that often. And on this one, I thought I would give it a go. So that's why that's there. And you don't have to be too careful putting this paint on. It's going to be a sky and it's going to be like a grey, well, a very dark sky with lots of indications of cloud and different forms and tones in it. So um, you can go a little bit mad. And also you can keep adding, because you're working wet in wet, you can keep adding some stronger colour till you get a tone that you are happy with. And you could also put some diagonal sort of lines behind the cottage as well. It will give this sense of overlap and recession, as if the sky is actually behind the cottages and not just being painted around them. 
Now, as I was painting this, I was noticing that I was getting some sort of reaction between the paint I was putting on and that masking tape. It was almost as if the masking tape was sort of repelling the paint or it was interacting with something that was in the, the masking tape itself. I hadn't noticed this before on any other tape that I've used and um, so I've bought some more so I'm going to give um, a new masking tape a go. Anyway I carried on regardless of this and removed the masking fluid when the sky was totally dry. I'm using a, um, a special sort of masking fluid remover rubber here which is really good and I'll put the link in the description box below. It did peel off quite nicely as well and I found that quite useful because instead of rubbing the pencil marks out it meant you could pull the the masking fluid off and leave your drawing intact underneath which is a bonus. So I'm beginning here now to paint the roofs on the cottages. You're going to be painting these in a similar way that you'd paint a flat wash um, which is um, loading your brush quite frequently so that your paint doesn't dry out on your brush. If you keep loading your brush with lots of paint then the final wash will look very transparent. What I find is people don't tend to do this, they tend to put some paint on the brush and then spread it out as much as they can and then it gets very light and then you've got to go over it again and then you've got to go over it again and you end up with a very sort of opaque dry looking area. So do try to mix up enough paint strong enough and to apply it in one go and reload your brush very often. The colour I'm using here for this first one is Burnt Sienna with maybe just a touch of ultramarine um, added to it just to knock it back a little bit. I'm painting the, all the roofs in a similar way and to ring the changes and to make it more interesting I'm varying the colour on the three roofs here. Just to recap the colours I'm using here are ultramarine with Burnt Sienna. I wouldn't use the indigo as the blue to darken the Burnt Sienna. Um, it's quite likely you might end up with a green, so beware of that. Again, I am painting quite carefully along the edges. You may want to let the, that first roof dry before you put the second one on, or you can paint very carefully around it and leave just a little touch of white so that the two roof areas don't merge together. I've mixed up quite a dark mix of the um, ultramarine with some burnt sienna and I'm painting the windows and the doors all in a similar way. Uh, it's simplifying them but I think it looks quite effective and it's just like doing a little um, triangle shape in the right hand corner. So you're presuming here that the light is maybe hitting from the front or hitting from the right hand side so you're getting a, a shadow on the right hand side there. I quite like doing this, it is very effective. Now for the foreground area I've mixed up a very strong mix of burnt umber with ultramarine and also as you can see I've got a weaker mix there of the same colours which I'm going to go into first and cover this foreground area. Again similar to the sky you've not got to be too particular with this. Vary the tone and the colour a touch maybe but the most important thing is to keep it very wet this first wash because you're going to be putting some of that darker mix into it. So just continue with this, keeping it very wet and maybe at the foreground area you could darken it a touch. Try and let some of your brush strokes show. Don't put it on too evenly because this is, after all, it's, um, it's land and ground in front of these cottages which will have dips and valleys in it and lots of texture. So now I'm going in with some of this darker mix. I particularly want it nice and dark against the cottages. Um, the sky is dark, the land's going to be dark, so that should set off the white of the cottages really nicely. I'm sort of suggesting a slope on the ground here, so putting the strokes in uh, at a little bit of an angle, leaving some of the first wash showing. How you do this is entirely up to you. Um, I will show you another picture that I did at the same time. Um, in a little while where I made a suggestion of a path leading up to the doorway which I think worked quite nicely. So just, just carry on, add some of this paint, don't fiddle around with it too much.
It's almost done at this stage. I just went in with um, a little bit more of the darker mix at the top, which is showing quite nicely as the paint is drying up there. Just adds a little bit more contrast to it. And with a small brush to add the suggestion of a fence, which will give a little bit of interest to the picture because there's not a lot of detail on it. And again, maybe just the suggestion of a few grasses here and there. It's very easy to overdo this, um, this stage of the paintings. A really important stage of doing any building is putting the cast shadows on there. The cast shadows are what really brings the buildings to life. And a, a mistake that a lot of people make, and I can make myself sometimes, I know, is to make this shadow colour too thick, too much pigment in it. It needs to be watery but it still does need to have enough pigment in there to give you that colour. If you do make the shadow colour too thick, or if you go over it more than once usually, then you end up with getting not a shadow, but you're getting something that looks more like, well, more like a painted area of the wall. You could see then I had to remove a little bit. I felt it was a little bit too dark on the left-hand side there. So you can get some understanding, I hope, of the mix that I've got here. And it might be an idea just to have a practice on some of these mixes and make sure you've got them right before you put them on your painting. And also remember that um, these colours are going to dry back about 40%, so make them a touch stronger than you think. Your cast shadow colours will usually have blue in them. And in this case, I've used my ultramarine, again, with just a little touch of the burnt sienna. When everything is totally dry, then I rub out the pencil marks, and it's amazing the difference it makes. I'm noticing here also that um, the paint in the foreground is not reacting in a similar way to the, to the sky colour, so possibly it's the, um, maybe it's the indigo that's having this sort of um, adverse effect with the masking tape. So removing the masking tape it has given me that lovely nice sharp edge that I was looking for that sets the picture off. But you can see here the effect that that particular masking tape made on the picture. You can see how it's much lighter where the masking tape and the, uh, and the paint was reacting together. Here I'm just tidying up one or two little areas um, where the masking fluid went a bit astray um, with some white gouache. So here's the final picture again, and um, I'm quite pleased with that. I think they've got some nice contrast between the cottages and the background and the foreground. A lesson to be learned here for all of us is to test out any new masking tape that we buy before taping it round our pictures. I cropped this picture down a little bit more, um, so it cut out some of the edge, and uh, again, I think that works quite nicely. All is not lost. As I mentioned earlier in the video, I did work on another painting at the same time and I worked it in the same way. It did turn out a little bit lighter than the other one. I didn't use the masking tape this time. And you can see what it's looking like when I've, I've cropped it down. I put that second dark wash on in the foreground to, in a way to suggest a path which leads you into the picture. And I also put a little bit of smoke from the chimney using some white gouache. As always, I do hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you picked up some tips that you can use in your own paintings. I should be continuing with the cottage theme in the next couple of months, so if you don't want to miss anything, you can always subscribe to my channel. Bye for now.